Hi there, and welcome back to another PSDK and Pokemon Studio tutorial video. In this video, we're going to be going over how to create another ability, but in this one, we're going to be inheriting from an ability and also adding in new methods. So without further ado, let's just get started. As usual, the first thing we're going to need to do is go into our scripts folder, and we're going to need to create a new file. You can name it whatever you want as usual, but just remember it does need to have those initial five numbers and that this does change the load order of the scripts. So in my case, I'm just going to stick to the usual 00100 and then I'm going to type in the name of this ability, which is chaoscloud.rb. This ability is going to be modifying the weather at the end of every single turn. The best way to learn or think about how I would personally handle this was looking into how uh, other weather abilities worked. So first I went into Drizzle. Register, drizzle, like so. And then I went for the weather setting abilities. Now to explain a little bit how this ability works, on switch event gets called, and when this hook gets called, it does a check to see and make sure that the person who's getting switched at least has this ability. If you remember at target means that you have the ability. So it's basically saying return, meaning don't do anything. If the person that you're getting switched in with does not have this ability. Now, if the person that's getting switched in does have the ability, then we're gonna create a weather handler, which is just gonna be the handler for the logic weather change handler. This is basically just a shorthand version of this. Then we're gonna do a check. So this is basically saying we wanna return, but we don't wanna return if the weather handler decides that the weather is appliable. If the weather is appliable, we're gonna to skip to the next line, which says show the ability of the person that's getting switched in. Then we need to determine the number of turns that the weather is gonna stay. We determine that by checking if the person that's getting switched in has a held item and the item is the item DB symbol. We check the item DB symbol down here in a different method. And in this case for drizzle, we're checking to make sure that it's the damp rock. If the damp rock is the held item by the Pokemon that's being switched in, then we're gonna give eight turns to the weather. Otherwise we're gonna give five turns. Then the weather handler will decide to change the weather to that number of turns. And then we're going to see the animation play out for the weather based on the animation ID that's given down here. Now, I forgot to say earlier, but the weather is decided right here. It's getting called here and it's returning this value here. As you can see, though, these are private methods down here, which means that other abilities like drought, sand stream and snow warning are not pulling in this information right here. It's only actually getting this public method here. Then in those abilities that are inheriting from Drizzle, we need to create private methods for the weather, the item DV symbol, and the animation ID so that it knows the right thing for the right ability. So now that you understand how all of that works, we're going to create our ability, which is pretty similar to this, but it also applies at the end of every single turn, which means that we just need to use another hook. To figure out that hook, you just need to go to this link down below, which is that GitLab that shows you how to use the battle system and really how to code and register anything in the battle system. We want to go to here, which says how to define a hook inside an effect. And if you remember last time, this is the one that we used for our last ability. But this time we're going to be using the on end turn event because at the end of every turn, if the Pokemon is out, we want to change the weather. So we're going to copy this. Then we're going to go over here to our ability. We're going to go to chaos cloud, and then we need to start working on this script. Now, just to get a little bit better understanding and just to kind of like try and remember the code, I'm going to stop suggesting that you copy and paste from other abilities unless you really have to, and instead try to remember these things. So when you're creating an ability, it's always going to be in the battle module, and it's also going to be in the effects module, and then it needs to be class ability because that's what we're creating. And then we need to create the class for our ability itself, which is in this case, Chaos Cloud. And if you're inheriting from another ability, that ability name goes here. Otherwise, this would be just ability. But we're inheriting from Drizzle. Now we have four different things here, which means that we need at least four different ends. And now we've kind of set up the Chaos Cloud to be ready. Next, we need to create our new hook, which is going to be def. And then we're going to paste what we copied from the GitLab. And then we need to make another end. And then on this new line under the definition of the hook, we're going to need to create a new variable. This is going to help us determine which random weather to apply. So in this case, I'm just going to call it weather num because it's going to return an integer. And it's going to give a random number between zero and three. That's what this means right here. Whatever number's in here, it's going to give you a random number between zero and that number. Now in the next line, we're going to create another weather handler. 
which we did do in Drizzle. But in this one, we're going to do it again because this is a different method. We're going to call it logic weather change handler. And then we want to make sure that we're still including a return here that is basically saying we need to return unless we can actually apply this weather. If we can apply this weather, then what we want to do is we want to show that ability so that people know what's going on. And then if you remember at target means the person who's holding this ability, this line is basically just going to show the ability of the person that we're calling here, which happens to be the person who holds the chaos cloud ability. And then on the next line, we need to determine the number of turns that the weather is going to last. This is due to in case the Pokemon ends up getting switched out or something. We want to do number of turns at target hold item. And then we want to do item DB symbol. And then this is what's called a itinerary operator. I believe that's the right way to say it. What this means is we're basically doing a conditional check all in one line. These things are really cool and really useful, and I try to use them as much as I can personally. So to try and help you understand how this works is we basically are setting a variable here and we're determining how much it's going to be worth or we're determining how much this variable, like what its value is going to be based on this condition right here. So we're checking again if the holder of this ability's held item is this DB symbol, which we don't know what this DB symbol is yet, but we're going to determine it later. And then by putting a question mark here, you're then going to follow it by two different values. In this case, we're going to do an eight, a colon, and then a five. So if this condition is true, it's going to go off this initial value here. If it's false, it's going to go off the second value here. And then we want to call that weather handler dot weather change and then we want to say the weather and the number of turns then we want to call the logic scene visual show rmxp animation and we want to do this on the target and then the animation id so a lot of this should actually look pretty familiar because if you go back to the weather setting ability and you look at the on switch event most of it is actually taken from here the only thing that we got rid of is this first return because we're not getting switched in there is no width and then over here, we have the weather handler, which we also used. We also used this return, as you can see right here. And then after that, we have what shows the ability with the Pokemon that's getting switched in, but ours is gonna show the ability of the target, the person who has the ability. Then you have the number of turns, which is exactly just taken right from there. But again, we're switching it with the target because we don't have somebody that we're switching in with. And then we're calling that weather handler again, changing the weather for the number of turns, and then also showing that animation. So it's almost exactly the same. Now under this, we need to create private methods. And to do that, we need to type private, and then we need to start defining these new methods. The first one we're gonna create is gonna be this one right here, which is gonna tell us the weather. We're gonna do def weather, we're gonna do an end, and then we're gonna do this. I know that we randomized it here, so it might be a little bit repetitive to do it in here as well, but this is just how I did it. And honestly, you probably don't need to copy everything I'm doing like one to one, but it still will work. So we're gonna do weather num equals rand three. And then here is what we're gonna use what is called a switch case. So if you don't know what those are, you will literally type case, and then we're gonna do weather num. This could be any variable or really any function maybe, but essentially this right here is saying based on whatever this is valued at, then we're going to do some different stuff. So when it's valued at zero, we're going to return sunny. And when it's valued at one, we're going to return rain. And if it's valued at two, then we're going to return sandstorm. And if it's valued at three, then we're going to return, oops, return hail. And then we're going to do an end. Usually in these, you do also have an else case at the end, just in case there's like some type of error. We're not going to have an error in this situation. The random is always going to end up between zero and three. So there should be no situation where we need that else. Now, after that, we're going to do a new definition for the item DB symbol. Now we're not gonna randomize the weather in this one because we need it to be consistent and we don't want it changing in between these methods. So in this case, we're just doing another case of the weather num and we're essentially doing the same thing. So I'm actually just gonna copy and paste this. You can do it what you decide. You gotta do another end. And then instead of sunny, we're looking for the heat rock. Instead of rain, we're looking for the damp rock. Instead of sandstorm, we're looking for the smooth rock. Instead of hail, we're looking for the icy rock. 
We only have one more method that we need to create, which is gonna be the animation ID. And again, we're doing the same exact case. So we're just gonna do case of weather num, paste that. And in this case, we wanna return some different values here based on the animation ID. You can get these all from here, which is how I did it. So for example, we got drizzle animation here for rain is 493. The animation for the sun is 492. The animation for Sandstream is 494. And the animation also used in Snow Warning is 494. So in this situation, since two of them actually use the same animation, you can do when two or three. And we want to return 494 for either of these two values. For when it's raining, we wanted to return 490, whoops, 493. And for when it's sunning, it was or when it's sunny, it's 492. Now we're almost done. Uh, we've completely written the code. We just need to leave some documentation and we also need to register this ability. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here. Remember that we only want three ends here at the end when we're registering our ability. So register, and then in this case, we're doing chaos cloud and the class is chaos cloud. Gonna leave an empty line at the end and now it's time to leave some documentation to make it easier on ourselves i'll let you get the pass and you can totally just look up the def on turn event just pick one of these random ones for from an ability and just just copy this just copy it it's gonna make it easier for yourself and then we're gonna just paste it right here we're gonna make sure there's a space here at least it's for readability now we have all of this fancy easy documentation for this one already done now we need to do it for the other ones. So these ones are gonna be a little bit more custom documentation just to make it, you know, look a little proper. So we could do randomizes the weather, then we want to do at return. And then this is gonna be integer. And I'm just gonna copy this cause I'm lazy. And we're gonna do the same thing here, turn to an integer, but this one is gonna randomize the item DB. And this one is gonna randomize the animation. Well, I guess it doesn't really randomize it. So this is the animation for weather. This one also doesn't really randomize it. So this is the item DB for weather. And this one randomizes the weather. Now with all that out of the way, we've actually finished this ability completely. I know that inheriting might seem pretty difficult, but I, I hope I explained it uh, relatively well. Now to test it. And remember to test it, we're gonna have to go into studio and we're gonna have to go into our database and we are gonna have to create this new ability. This one is gonna be called Chaos Cloud. The description is gonna be randomizes the weather at the end of every turn. And we are gonna save this and we're just gonna launch the game. So now that we're in game, if you remember from the last video, you can do actors and then the index of the actors, the ability of them, and then do an equal sign and then the DB symbol for that ability, which in this case is chaos cloud. And then when you go into the Pokemon and you go to their summary and you go over here, you're going to see that they have that ability. Now, when we go into a battle, so now when we go into a battle, it should randomize the weather every single turn and it should show the ability while doing it. Which so far, it looks like it's working. And as we see at the end of the turn, it changed it to a sunlight. Now if we switch in to a different Pokemon, because if you remember we are inheriting from Drizzle, it should also randomize the ability or it should also randomize the weather when we do that too. And it looks like it did. <laughs> so as you can see, this ability works perfectly just as we planned. And I think this one was pretty fun. I hope to see maybe someone include this one in their game, or I just can't wait to see some of the abilities that you guys come up with. If you guys have already started creating custom abilities, let me know down below because I'm very curious. Um, I hope I made this as easy and as digestible as possible. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.